It's bowl season, the Texas Bowl. Ole Miss Rebels, Texas Tech Red Raiders. I'm going to give it all to you right here. The full matchup, breakdown, score prediction right here on the SEC Recap Podcast. You're listening to the SEC Recap Podcast. I am your host, Ben Warren. If you're joining us in audio form from Google, Apple, Spotify, don't hit pause, don't hit stop. Keep it right on rolling, but leave us a rating and a review. I appreciate it so much. It helps us grow the show. And if you're joining me on YouTube once again, thank you so much for being here. I love the surge in activity we've been getting lately. I love the engagement on the videos. Guys, keep smashing those thumbs up. I'd love to get five to 10 likes on every single one of these videos. Love to get at least 200 views on every single one of these videos. And as always, I love engaging with your comments, your score predictions, even, even when you disagree with me. I don't, I don't care. I don't mind. That's what we're here for. That's why I love doing this and I do it all for you guys. No more wasting time. The Texas Bowl. This is Ole Miss, Texas Tech. This game is December 28th at 9 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern time in Houston, Texas. The eight and four Ole Miss Rebels under third year head coach Lane Kiffin draw the Texas Bowl with the seven and five Texas Tech Red Raiders under first year head coach Joey McGuire. Kiffin has taken the Rebels to three consecutive bowl games in his tenure at Mississippi. While this will be McGuire's first bowl game as a head coach. Ole Miss started this season on a hot, a red hot 7-0 streak but faced a lot of criticism of a back-loaded schedule. That proved to be true when the Rebels lost four of their last five games. Texas Tech, little bit more of a roller coaster ride, but they finished confidently with three straight wins over Big 12 opponents to conclude their season. This will be Texas Tech's third appearance all time in the Texas Bowl. That's tied with Texas A&M and Kansas State for most appearances in the Bowl's history. That does not include the team's appearances in the predecessor bowls, which are the Houston Bowl and the Blue Bonnet Bowl, as it was originally. It, it was known as the Blue Bonnet Bowl from 59, 1959 to 87. And while it alternated between a couple of locations, it typically, not always, featured a team from Texas versus an at-large opponent. So after a period of being defunct, the Blue Bonnet Bowl was resurrected as the Houston Bowl in 2000. And it resumed for a period of about six years until 2006 when it rebranded as the Texas Bowl and has been played under that brand ever since. Uh, but back to the teams. Texas Tech holds a one and one record in the Texas Bowl. Uh, one and one because they've only played twice. This will be their third appearance. This will be Ole Miss's first ever Texas Bowl appearance. This year will be the eighth consecutive year. The game features a Big 12 versus SEC matchup. I think that's pretty awesome. Over that span, the Big 12 is four and three versus SEC opponents in this bowl game. Can Ole Miss get the W and even things up with the Big 12 in this year's Texas Bowl? We're going to jump in and find out. And as always, I love to start with the offense. If you're listening in audio form, hit that hit the episode description. Click on the link to the episode article. It'll take you to my page. You can find the article. Click it, and then you can browse these nice infographics, which I make for free for you guys always. Uh, by the way, y'all can screen cap these, share them. Doesn't matter to me. Um, okay, so Ole Miss comes in with the number 28 scoring offense. I always rank offenses and defenses in terms of scoring offense and defense, and that's because... Uh, you know, yardage is, is a lot higher than points scored in games. So the difference between, say, like 28 and 29 can be uh, just a single decimal place. Whereas when you're talking about yardage differences, the difference between 28 and 29 could be like three yards or four yards or five yards. Uh, so Ole Miss with the number 28 scoring offense, averaging 34.2 points per game on 491 
total yards. They have the number 67 passing attack, averaging 230 passing yards a game. They've got 20 passing tutties. Sometimes I call those patties on the year. But this is where they are the best, and we're going to dig into this here in just a minute. The number three rushing offense in the country, in the FBS, not just the SEC, but overall, the number three rushing attack. They average 261 rushing yards per game, and they've got 31 ruddies. That's rushing tutties on the season. Let's match that up with Texas Tech, who comes into this game also with a very respectable offense. Number 32 scoring offense in the country, 33.6 points per game on 459 total yards. Strength of this team is that passing game. They have the number 12 passing offense in terms of yards, averaging 307 passing yards per game. They've got 25 patties on the season and the number 67 rushing attack middle of the road there 67 is about dead middle of the road uh 152 rushing yards a game 25 rushing tutties first of all before i move on from this i love how this lines up you have a top 10 rushing attack the number three rushing attack for ole miss the number 12 rushing attack for texas tech and both of them have the number 67 uh, passing and rushing, like the opposite, uh, the opposite offensive attack. Ole Miss with the number 67 pass, Texas Tech with the number 67 rush. Here's the thing, though. I have to put this on here. If it's negative, I'm starting to put these on the offensive graphic. And if it's uh, positive, I put it on the defensive graphic. Texas Tech minus nine in turnover margin. That is really, really not good. Um, that means they have turned the ball over nine more times than their defense has created turnovers. So most of that, we'll get into this here in just a moment. A lot of these were earlier in the season, to be fair, especially in terms of the interceptions. Um, but they did have three fumbles to end the season. Uh, so I'm putting this here just to note minus nine turnover margin. Really not good there. Um, overall, for that top 10 rushing attack, that number three rushing attack, the slightly better scoring offense, and because Texas Tech has that minus nine turnover margin, I'm giving the statistical advantage here to Ole Miss. So statistical advantage for offense goes to Ole Miss. Let's look now at the defensive side of the ball. Ole Miss with the number 51 scoring defense. So they're allowing 24.2 points per game and about 380 total yards. They have the number 57, uh, and I'm, I'm going to go in here and change this color. This should actually be yellow. Red if it's like near the back third, yellow if it's in the middle third, and green uh, if it's top third. I missed that color there, but that 57, that should be in yellow. Doesn't change the number, but... You know, nice visuals to go along with the stats always helps, I think. So the number 57, kind of middle uh, passing defense. Uh, they allow 218 passing yards per game. And the number 83 rushing defense. So not a super strong defense overall in terms of yards. Um, and they're kind of right near the, the top of the second third. I shouldn't word stuff like that. That's just going to get confusing to listeners. But number 51, they're close to the top third, um, but just right there, uh, you know, 10 spots or so, uh, eight spots maybe beyond it. Uh, Ole Miss is plus one in turnover margin, so they are positive, not by much. You'd still want to be positive rather than neutral or negative, however. All right, Texas Tech, number 98 scoring defense. This is... Definitely in the bottom third. This is not a good uh, scoring defense. They they are allowing 29 and a half points per game and 414 total yards. They have the number 98 passing defense and the number 91 rushing defense. They're giving up about 248 yards through the air and 166 on the ground. By the way, guys, if you go and look at these stats on whatever, uh, you know, whatever, platform i round these numbers okay so you might go look at some of this and be like oh it's actually 247.6 
I round these numbers. The 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 total yards again. It's often like four fourteen point three. Okay, for for all intents and purposes here, that's not really changing my analysis. It's not changing their statistical placement or their rank overall in terms of yards or scoring offense or defense. So I just round them to make them look nicer on the graphics. So if you're if you're fact checking me or going and, and looking at other sources for these and you're seeing like one sixty one point eight uh and you're looking at me showing you one sixty two, that's why I'm just telling you I round. It just makes it nicer for the eyes for me. All right. Let's move on. Let me let's see. Let's move on to injuries, opt-outs, and transfers. Uh, and I will start with Ole Miss here. So transfers for Ole Miss. Defensive end, Damon Clowney. He's played 31 snaps this season. Um, probably the two most significant here, uh, Luke Altmeyer, who was technically the number two QB, although there was a little bit of a quarterback battle at the beginning of the year with him. He has hit the transfer portal. And then cornerback, Miles Battle. He's played 322 snaps. He's got 33 total tackles and an interception on the year. Um, you know, about the quarterback, QB depth is somewhat of a concern now for Ole Miss. I think behind Altmeyer is Kincaid Dent, who's thrown just nine passes for 14 yards in three years at Ole Miss. Um, so thankfully, they just have to get through the bowl game. Jackson Dart's done fine. I'm not worried about his health or anything, but you're always one play away uh, if you're a backup quarterback from stepping into that role. Um, so hopefully losing Altmeyer here doesn't come back to hurt them in this bowl game. As far as Miles Battle, he was a pretty solid corner. He was second on the team this year uh, among cornerbacks for solo and total tackles. I don't know that there's a huge drop-off in productivity without him. But losing a starter isn't ideal. I mean, I, I think that's significant. He's a graduate um, with with a one with a year of eligibility, he has one year of eligibility remaining. Um, perhaps there's a realization that maybe there's no future for him in the NFL, and he's trying to go somewhere and make a little bit of NIL money as a guaranteed starter somewhere that really needs an experienced quarter. Don't fault him for that at all. That's just the way the game is now. Good on him for trying to get some opportunity. And I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just speculating here. I shouldn't speculate, but um, I could definitely see that being the case. Uh, you know, he wants to go somewhere where he can be a guaranteed starter and make maybe make a little something that he's not making there at Ole Miss. All right, let's look at um, Texas Tech. Um, free safety, Reggie Pearson, and then... Uh, I don't know what he's listed as on the depth chart, but quarterback Donovan Smith, I know he's been a starter this year. He's been a backup this year. We'll, we'll talk about the the quarterback carousel at Texas Tech here uh, a little bit further. Um, but Pearson is an experienced senior defensive back. He was a three-year starter who started at Wisconsin before transferring to Texas Tech for two years. He's got two interceptions and 55 total tackles on the season. Um, so no doubt he'll get offered somewhere and probably land a little NIL money as well. Um, as far as Smith goes, he had kind of an up and down season, but we know the, the starting QB job ultimately went to Tyler Shuck after a series of injuries and kind of a, you know, some swap skis among all three of those starting QBs this season. Morton Barron is behind Shuck now as the number two, but I think either of those guys could win the starting job next year. You never like to lose a productive player, and it, it kind of gives me the same vibes as the Luke Altmaier situation with Ole Miss. You have a guy with Division One Power 5 experience at a at arguably the most critical role on the field, which is your quarterback. So you never like to lose a player with that amount of experience at production, regardless of how you feel about their production throughout the season. Uh, but it seems clear that the team is comfortable with Shuck and Barron. So that's who they're rolling with. I like their depth situation maybe a little bit more than I like Ole Miss's right now. That's for sure. All right, let's talk key players in this game. I'm going to start with Ole Miss again. Man, if you've heard me talk about Ole Miss this season, you know exactly who I'm about to say. It's the freshman phenom running back, Quinn Sean Judkins. This dude is so freaking good. 251 carries. He's got 1,476 yards, 16 
tutties, ruddies, rushing tutties. He is number eight in the FBS in rushing yards. He's he's one spot ahead of Blake Corum, who a lot of people felt should have been a Heisman finalist. Now, I'm not like I'm not suggesting don't don't slide in the comments here being, you know, accusing me of saying that Judkins should have been a Heisman finalist this year. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just kind of illustrating like how good this dude has been as a freshman. He's one spot ahead of Blake Corum. You know, I think if Ole Miss through, you know, some form of uh some twist of fate ended up, you know, in the top five or six or even going to the playoffs this year. I think you definitely would have heard more about Quinshawn Judkins as a Heisman candidate. All that to say, he's got a huge future ahead if he continues at this level. Okay, along with Quinshawn Judkins, what does it take to make a really good running back? Well, it takes a good offensive line. The Rebels aren't terrific in preventing tackles for loss, but they're number 20 in fewest sacks allowed. A solid offensive line helps that number one key player on this team do what he does best. So provide some protection for the QB, open up those run lanes, let Quinshawn Judkins do his thing. All right, let's look at Texas Tech. The Red Raiders. Quarterback, Tyler Shuck. By the way, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Shuck as in like all shucks. If I'm wrong, I'm sure I'm sure I'll be hearing it uh, in the comments soon. Anyway, look, a 59.4% completion rating isn't wowing anyone, but the strength of this Texas Tech offense is the passing game. I think if he'd if he'd been the consistent starter throughout the season, you might see that improve a little bit. This team has 530 pass attempts to 477 rush attempts. Now that doesn't scream out of balance pass heavy, but three different QBs have thrown for over 1,000 yards, combining for 3,684 passing yards compared to 1,830 rushing yards. That's the passing yardage that makes them a top 12 passing team, while that 1,830 rushing yards makes them kind of a dead middle of the road uh, rushing team. And we'll go back here and look at, let me throw my offense graphic back up on the screen here. So 307 passing yards a game, that puts them in, that number 12, that that top 15, top 20 passing offense. Whereas you look at their rushing production, it's a significant drop off. And you could say the same exact same argument, just reverse for Ole Miss, right? It's that that productive running game that makes them that top 10 while you, you know, flip it. Um, they're basically dead middle of the road there in uh in the passing game. Um, I'm also going to include for Texas Tech their offensive line, okay, because of this stat. They are tied for 114th in fewest sacks allowed, as in not good. Uh, they've allowed 39 sacks on this year for minus 251 yards. That's atrocious. They're going to have to play better pass protection against an Ole Miss defense that averages 2.75 sacks per game, per game, okay? So what I think this com game comes down to, piggybacking off of that previous point, offensive line play. Texas Tech's offensive line play is, well, offensive. Forgive me. Ole Miss ranks number 27 defensively in team sacks, while Texas Tech ranks number 114 in sacks allowed. When the strength of your offense is the passing attack, that's a bad matchup. That's a less than ideal matchup if you're a Red Raider. Now, the Red Raiders did turn in three of their best rushing performances of the season in the back half of the season. They have a couple of nice running backs in Thompson and Brooks uh, who have combined for uh, over 1,200 yards, 1,271. I'm fixing a stat here real quick. And 13 TDs on the season. The problem is that during those six games, they also allowed an average of 186 yards to opposing running backs. You just can't do that, especially to a team that's bringing the number one rushing attack in the country, already averaging 261 rushing yards a game. 
Now, I don't really believe in momentum from the end of the regular season directly translating into bowl performance. There's there's just a lot of time in between to address things, to correct issues. You also have the portal now, which impacts team, di- team dynamic. You have players declaring for the draft. You have players hitting the transfer portal, sometimes key players hitting the transfer portal. You also have changes to coaching staff, coaches leaving for other jobs, staff turnover. Sometimes they take analysts and assistants with them. It's just the way it is. But we all know exactly the game plan Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss will be bringing. It's the same one they ended the season with. They are going to run Quinshawn Judkins and make Texas Tech stop him. If they can't stop him, they'll just keep running him. So this brings me to my next key for the game, the red zone. Texas Tech ranks a surprising, if I just showed you that defensive that defensive stat graphic, you wouldn't think this, but Texas Tech ranks number eight in red zone offensive efficiency. They average 92% on scoring attempts in the red zone, and that's really, really good, but it's not exactly where I'm going to tie into my previous point. It's their red zone defensive efficiency. They rank number nine in red zone defensive efficiency. How about that? Red Raiders are top 10, number eight, number nine in red zone offense and red zone defense. Defensively, they allow just 73% of red zone scoring attempts to opponents. However, I need to point this out, add some granularity to this. When it comes to red zone attempts, the Red Raiders have allowed opponents to get inside the red zone 53 times. That's a high number comparatively to other teams ranked ahead of them in that same category. For example, Georgia has allowed just 28. Golly, that's insane. Well, that's for another podcast. Illinois has allowed just 27. We're going to be talking about them too in the Rely Quest poll. Penn State has allowed just 39, on and on and on. So while the defensive efficiency in the red zone is good for Texas Tech. They're still allowing opponents to get there more often than other teams ranked near them in that in to, in the top 10 of that category. The exception is UCF, um, who I think has allowed opponents to get into the red zone 54 times. But more of the exception, not the rule. Um, I will mention, though, that Texas Tech did hold Kansas, TCU, and Oklahoma to a combined... Those are the last... Uh, three of the last four games, I think, on their schedule, to a combined two rushing touchdowns. Two. Um, Kansas has a really good rushing duo in Devin Neal and Jalen Daniels. Uh, TCU's going to the playoffs. And Oklahoma, uh, you know, hadn't been Oklahoma's year, but still a pretty good run team when you look at the numbers. Those are all solid rushing attacks. But Ole Miss is going to be the best rushing attack y'all seen yet. Let me tell you. All right. ESPN's FPI has Ole Miss favorite at a 61.7% chance to win versus Texas Tech at a 38.3% chance to win. The spread favors Ole Miss at minus three and a half, as does the money line at minus 170. The over under six at, sits at 69 and a half. Nice. At the time I'm recording this with team totals for Ole Miss at 36.4 and Texas Tech at 32. Point two. Texas Tech is seven and five against the spread, while Ole Miss is four and seven and one against the spread. They've not been good against the spread. And most games that have been within like a four point spread, it's been a coin flip for Ole Miss all season. Uh, for example, every game this season in which Ole Miss has been a three point favorite or less, they've lost or pushed. Minus three and a half doesn't exactly inspire confidence to lay the points with the Rebels. I actually don't think either team will get their point average here. And the total comes in under the 69 and a half. So I'm leaning the under. I know Ole Miss didn't finish strong while Texas Tech did. But again, I don't think that same momentum carries into this game the same way for either team. I like this game to go under the 69 and a half. And I don't think that both teams crack 30 points. I think maybe one does, but not both. Texas Tech with that minus nine in turnover margins, 17 of the 17 interceptions on the year. I know most of those came in the first half of the season, but they also fumbled three times in their last two games. I think Texas Tech turns it over once or twice. Ole Miss capitalizes, and that's the difference in this ball game. Give me Ole Miss 
34, Texas Tech, 28. Ole Miss covers the three and a half, gets the W. SEC improves to four and four versus the Big 12 in the Texas Bowl, but it's still a hell of a game. And I think Texas Tech is a good enough team. You still might see this swing the other way, but that's not my opinion. I'm taking Rebels for the win. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether you think I'm right or wrong. You could tell me if I'm wrong. Just be nice about it. You don't have to call me names. You don't have to call me an idiot, nothing like that. I love engaging with you guys. I love hearing what you have to say. Before you leave, smash that like, smash that thumbs up on this video. I'm on the road to 100 subs. So if you're here and you've watched any of my videos and haven't hit the subscribe button yet, Take a chance on me. That's all I'm asking. Sub to the channel. Hit the noty bell. I'm going to have previews for all of the SEC bowl games coming out. I've already hit you with uh, the Gasparilla Bowl, the Las Vegas Bowl, the Liberty Bowl. Soon after this, you're going to be hearing um, the Orange Bowl, the Gator Bowl, the Sugar Bowl. They're all coming at you. So make sure you're following me on Twitter at SEC Recap. Subscribe to the podcast here or wherever you prefer to chug your podcast, guys. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. We got college football taking us through to 2023. That'll do it. Have a great one. I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the SEC Recap Podcast. Oh,